The first speaker is going to be Cindy Fulkers, and she is going to talk about uh, post-Fukushima uh, food monitoring in the United States. In general, testing of U.S. foodstuffs is inadequate. The U.S. limit of 1,200 becquerels per kilogram of just cesium-134 and or 137 is way too high. And it isn't binding, because the FDA can decide to act or not at any level of cesium contamination. So it's exactly like not having a standard at all. Japan, on the other hand, their limit is 100 becquerels per kilogram. So how should we think about these contamination levels and how low should we attempt to make cesium contamination in our food? There's no safe level of radiation. Every exposure does carry some risk, no matter how small. This graph is from ICRP report 111. ICRP stands for uh, International Commission on Radiological Protection. They recommend how much exposure is okay for humans. Governments follow these recommendations when setting standards. This graph shows us even what are considered very small amounts of cesium when ingested routinely can build up to unexpected levels in the body. Fukushima isn't the only source of cesium contamination. We have been being exposed to man-made radiation for generations from a number of different sources. So atomic bomb blasts worldwide, 954 petabecquerels, I will use quadrillion, and to give you an illustration of what a quadrillion is. If you have a quadrillion pennies on top of each other, they would reach the sun and back five times over. This is a big number. Every nuclear power reactor releases radionuclides to water and air as part of their operating plan. It doesn't take an accident to release this material, although we know they've had plenty of those as well. Then there's Chernobyl. 85 quadrillion becquerels of cesium-137. This number has a margin of plus or minus 26 petabecquerels. So that's 26 quadrillion becquerels. Now what these slides have shown us is that we don't have a good idea of just how much cesium has been released or continues to be released. Pathologies at these low levels can include hormone imbalances, angina, diabetes, and hypertension, which, by the way, are all sort of aging diseases as well. In addition to these diseases, as cesium passes out of your body, its radioactivity starts to damage your kidneys and your bladder, which in turn damages your body's ability to rid itself of the cesium. Why is the U.S. guideline so high? And how about Canada's? Well, it seems to be some sort of official policy to encourage people to accept increasingly radioactive food. Consider this quote also from ICRP Report 111. There may be situations where a sustainable agricultural economy is not possible without placing contaminated food on the market. As such, foods will be subject to market forces. This will necessitate an effective communication strategy to overcome the negative reactions from consumers outside the contaminated areas. So their plan consists not of informing the public that these contamination levels, what the contamination levels are so that we can decide for ourselves what is and is not appropriate. It consists instead of convincing us that man-made radiation in small doses is not harmful. 